a mentor once told me that being a pioneer in technologies that are emerging at breakneck speeds is like being a teacher that's only one semester ahead of the student. And that's a scary place to be. Last week, a friend of mine asked, when did you formulate all these concepts and principles that you're sharing about Strata on YouTube? The answer is none of this is premeditated. This stuff is so new. We are sharing ideas and conclusions as we discover them. It's hard to believe, but it's been nearly six months since I quit my job. And the decision to tell our story as it's happening has been a mixed bag. On the one hand, it's just plain scary. Part of that fear is sharing what we're doing publicly invites tremendous risk. Plus, telling this story takes a lot of time. A lot. The time investment requires us to work even more hours to complete the routine tasks of building the business, which leads to fatigue, heightened stress, irritation, tempers, even illness. So yeah, we're desperately wondering if the juice is worth the squeeze. Only time will tell. But for those of you who have watched the previous 13 episodes and chose to keep up with our story, I just want to take a moment and say thank you. For those of you who signed up for the Strata platform, even though it doesn't do anything today, thank you. And for those of you who have shared how the series has encouraged you to take on your own professional risks, congratulations. But there is another reason that we're doing this in public. The idea of Strata is so ambitious, it's so big, it's so different and so new. We don't want to build it behind closed doors and then learn what you think about it after it's out. We don't want to make unpredictable mistakes and then have to pivot our business or rebuild it. And we don't want to spend years designing something beautiful that actually doesn't help you work all that more efficiently. Strata is not an upgrade to your workflow. It's an entirely new way of working all together. If we're successful, Strata should allow everyone to tell their stories with higher quality, improve collaboration, and do so in less time. And we've been recording meetings about how to build Strata, and we want to show some new ones for you. And we start with a critical term that you may not be familiar with, but the people who make popular software that you use certainly are. Time to value. Time to value is a crucial way to measure the time it takes for a new customer to receive value from your product. Users move so fast and loyalty to products is generally so poor that customers must perceive value in new tools as quickly as possible or they won't sign up. In order to do this, the value must not be behind a paywall, it can't have too short of a trial period, and it can't limit the features of storage so much that you can't really try it out. These are mistakes that I think a lot of companies make. In a lot of cases, the best time to value experience has to be both crystal clear and free of charge. We want to start by improving the tasks that virtually everyone needs on every project regardless of the size of the budget or the size of the team. And to do that, you have to think like a plumber. Austin Case is the head of engineering, and even though he's an exceptional full-stack engineer, his best talent comes from a strategic approach to building solid code on very short timelines. Austin does this by acting like a city planner. After all, Strata is Italian for street. Austin visualizes Strata like a city, except the city hasn't been built yet, but the streets have been outlined. Before we can build a home, apartment building, or an office, we have to figure out how to get water and power to the whole grid. A home represents a small task, an apartment building represents a medium task, and an office building represents a large task. One way to build our city is to run some pipes to a future address, then build a house, and do all the detail work like hooking up the sinks and tubs and drains to the grid. Then move on to the next house, run all that pipe, then an apartment building, lots of plumbing there, and then a huge office building, and on and on. The problem with this approach is that at every new address, you have to start and stop the main water line to perform every task needed for every hookup to every faucet. But Austin had a different approach. Because he knew where the properties would eventually be, he ran the pipelines for the entire city first. He built infrastructure joints for every property, small, medium, and large. Small projects include building web pages, integrating email blasts, and data analytics. The mid-size apartment buildings are projects like signing up, notifications, and communication with the cloud. And the largest buildings are tasks such as account login, security, and cloud processing. But in this configuration, he didn't build the properties. Instead, he took the time to build the entire grid before a specific structure needed to be built. So for users who have already signed up, up, even though you can't see it, the infrastructure of the entire Strata platform already exists. This sets us up to hire engineers and designers to link up Austin's joints and build out the structures for each project. This strategy is allowing us to build high-velocity code. With the entire grid now finished, the whole team can prioritize 
features to Strata that will help deliver a fast time to value. But we're not exactly sure what those time to value features are or what we can afford to build in time for our January alpha release. So we brought the whole team together to kick off what we call the alpha sprint. Hassan Davis is a backend engineer and an expert in Rust. He's also a musician and owns a recording studio. So he brings a unique perspective to his engineering approach because he will also be a creative user of the Strata platform. Drew Martin comes from a critical sector in the airline transportation and healthcare industries, security and infrastructure. His experience is exactly what we need to ensure content and account security are bulletproof from day one. Andrea Otto is an editor who came from Disney and cryptocurrency. Her knowledge in both art and technology is what makes her perfect for this team and will help influence Strata so editors can quickly find value. And Neil Ishibashi. Neil also worked at Disney and was the director of product design at Fandango. He's also one of the most proficient Figma users I've ever seen. Along with Austin, my brother Peter, and myself, the seven of us sat down to kick off the alpha sprint and prioritize the build to see if it's possible to deliver a working alpha by the end of January. We're gonna have a laundry list of things we don't have time to build. We want the users then to give their feedback to help us prioritize that list. Put in a workflow, drop a plugin that colorizes or enhances, and that will be our first little marketplace plugin. Your soup to nuts, I've transferred, and then I have that going to a destination. And then in yeah. between, you're yeah. saying, yeah. maybe there's my workflow. If you can't trim, so, yeah. you're never going to publish an untrimmed asset. So, yeah, I'm going to throw that dependency in there. We're operating under a premise, which I don't think anyone would disagree with, which is content that looks better and sounds better has better engagement. So how do we do that? Well, one problem with such a vast market between narrative and influencers and podcasts and music and documentary and news, sports and houses of worship is that there's an enormous world of potential workflows. But in all our conversations of workflows, we realize something interesting. No matter what your market segment, no matter your budget or even the size of your team, there are four things that virtually everyone does. Transferring media from source X to source Y. Transcribe. Most content that's captured is talking heads. There needs to be transcription of what was said. We've kind of appended this to also include translate. And then third is transcode. So turning codec X into codec Y, tantalize. We can run all the content through some of these fine-tuned models that basically analyze what's in each frame. A transfer, transcribe, translate, transcode. Analyze. Analyze. Translate. Analyze. Translate. Translate. Transfer. Transcribe. Transfer. Transfer. And that's where Strata is going to start. The four T's. Transfer, transcribe, along with translate, transcode, and Tantalize, our version of Analyze. These functions touch virtually every market segment, reach the widest array of people, help teams of all sizes, and provide nearly instant time to value. So let's break down how each of these work. Transfer is the foundation to any project, whether it's from a camera to a shuttle drive, a shuttle drive to an edit drive, a rough cut to the cloud for review, or even the final output to your followers. No one can make custom content and distribute it without having to transfer at least one file. So what if we could revolutionize the transfer process by doing something no one else does? Create a ubiquitous transfer platform that allows you to securely connect local drives to clouds, clouds to local drives, and clouds to each other. Look, no one uses only one cloud or one library of assets. So what this means is you can give every user in your project the ability to search across every connected library. That means you can either leave the files in place, accessing them regardless of their location, or you can move files from one cloud to another at 10 gigabit transfer speeds without having to download or re-upload anything doesn't actually matter where your media is, you still get the same workflow. If you're gonna do cloud to cloud movement or cloud to drive, you want every And they want to transfer yeah. it. Yeah. It's like, sure. So again. we provide that service. To the user, this should all like hide. If I plug in this, I can use Strata. That seems weird. Oh, if it's in Google Drive, I can also use Strata. That's magic. That's a bridge to the cloud. Next up, we have Transcribe. I suspect that more than 95% of all video and audio recorded is someone talking. So why don't you just get a transcript of what's being said at the outset? You shouldn't have to manually create a transcript at all. You certainly shouldn't have to wait for it. And it shouldn't require an NLE to connect what's being said with where the time code is located. Most tools that transcribe don't have timelines. The ones that do, they require manual steps and they're just too involved for someone who just wants to do a simple paper edit or even a search 
What's more, when you know that there's a need for a language translation, why not automatically deal with that at the start? By transcribing and translating everything at the outset and providing a connection to the time code that it's located, you can instantly do a paper edit on an interview that's shot in a language you don't speak. And you wouldn't need to ask for help or load it into an NLE to get a special transcription tool to do any of that. Until now, transcription has been a task performed near the end of a project or as a special request. And in narrative editing, it's extremely rare to do it at all. But we aim to make time-coded transcription foundational to every storytelling process, which we predict will unlock incredible flexibility and speed. We always want to think of like user examples. Universities around the country and around the world, they're shooting lectures, they're typically editing them, and then trying to get an audience globally. Well, now we can shoot it, transcribe it, translate it, and now every one of their viewers can watch it in their own native tongue. I know I'm not alone in telling stories about the woes of transcoding. Back in college, my friends and I used to make DVDs on Apple DVD Studio Pro. And in 1999, transcoding a standard definition MPEG-2 on a single computer was only possible at four frames per second. In 2007, when I started processing R3D files for the first films and commercials shot on the Red One camera, we were doing a hefty bear on a single CPU from 4K to HD at two frames per second. Two. Even though we're moving much faster than those days, it's still common that people convert a camera format to an editing format, or they convert an editing format to a distribution format. Well, what if we could set that up ahead of time, save the settings, and then use the cloud to transcode them to any format and put them anywhere? This means you could set up workflows to convert raw camera files to edit-ready files like ProRes or DNX or HEVC. And because the cloud is infinitely scalable, imagine setting up a transcode pipeline that can transcode these files at hundreds or even thousands of frames per second. If my YouTube workflow did a crop, reframed it with an AI reframe to keep the face in it, transcoded it and published a YouTube, okay. we could get that by alpha. That I think that would be a little taste and people would be like, what else can I put in there? One of the worst parts of the editing process is logging. I say worst because logging is this step that I always feel is in my way before I can dive into an edit. But if you skip that part of getting organized, you may start editing a little sooner, but the overall time to edit will slow down because you're constantly looking for a needle in a stack of needles. So what if you could not only have your assets analyzed for you, what if you could tune your clips to analyze what you're going to be looking for? For example, there are programs that can apply custom metadata to a clip. Tagging like this is commonly typed in manually to a description field, or some tools allow you to manually tag assets with a button if you know what's in them. But this is all backwards. Who wants to dig through assets and then apply the necessary tags retroactively? The right way to do this is to know the tag that you want and have the computer analyze it and tag it for you. Tantalize is our reverse tagging in which you can take a clip, identify something you want tagged, let's say a logo, and then Strata Tantalize will examine every asset, find all the logos, tag all the clips for you, and you only have to do it once. Like nothing really analyzes yet. You said the Spooky Castle example, most people have to just know scene 12. If I shoot weddings for a living, we do think we can support natural language search. Give me all the brides. It just is way more free flowy of like a Google search rather than a exact search. Individually, the 4Ts may not seem that impressive. You can do some of these tasks with several tools in the market today. But what's different with Strata is that they can be combined or stacked together and saved into a single workflow that is shared across multiple clouds and across your whole crew. For example, connect files from one cloud library, let's say Google Drive, to a project in Strata. These files can be transcoded from a raw format like R3D to ProRes for the editor and to HEVC for web review. Then the files are transcribed and automatically provide a readable file and SRT so you can search the text to find the moment in the clip without an NLE. While you're at it, you can translate it to another language at the same time. Then you can analyze the clip for a search experience that's very similar to how you're searching automated tags on photos on your smartphone. Then you set up the results to automatically transfer to multiple destinations, maybe Dropbox for an editor and Frame.io for web dailies, all deployed to your entire crew as one workflow, not individual steps. And when you look at this workflow, none of these steps are creative. They're a utility that need to be done before the creative work can begin. That's what I mean by showing time to value. My prediction is that's how people are gonna actually create workflows at first. You're gonna sharpen it. And then you're gonna be like, ooh, now I wanna do this. And then you get the output, and now you look at your asset history and you're like, 
that's a workflow. The goal is not to provide value in the alpha as much as it is to get feedback on what is valuable. Sure. If people are like, all this analysis is great, I just need to search by it. It's like we hit the nail on the head and all we gotta do is build search. Right. That is like a great answer to alpha. So those all make sense to me. And then it's like, well, what's left? Oh. We can't deliver an alpha right now on time. Well, I th depends on where you I cut it. Know. We said if we cut it off here, which is mid-December, we're good. This, yeah. this will start to put a lot of pressure on Neil. Well, that's Strata. And that's an alpha. This Gantt chart shows all the big, medium, and small projects required to build and deploy the 4Ts in time to release an alpha before February 1st. While the timeline is tight, at the time of this recording, everything here is within scope. Now these features are only representing the alpha, but the reason we're disclosing all this long before it's available is because we're asking for feedback. I realize it's easier to give feedback once the alpha is available and that's why we're racing to get it done. But in the meantime, you can help us by signing up for Strata, liking and subscribing to this YouTube series so that we can stay in communication with new information and provide helpful feedback in the comments below. Do you see time to value in the four T's? What are the biggest concerns you have about what we outlined? And what questions do you have? And what can we prioritize immediately after the four T's? Well, we wanna capture your input so Neil and the team can apply it to the next phase the design wireframes.